When you uh, set out to do trigger warning, what did what was the what was the initial premise, and how much of it did it change until when you, once you got to production and once you started filming? You're one of the only people who've asked that question. You can you can I'm in look the business, at, bro. Yeah, <laughs> straight up, bro, <laughs> bro. You know, yeah, bro. Um, originally, we shot it with FX, and we over we overdid it. It mm. looked really good, but it looked really TV. Oh, and um, it could have been dope, but it would have been a parody of a very real thing I was tr- attempting to do. And right now, I'm talking about Cola. What it turned out, it turned into at Netflix was a real um, in-your-face, simple and plainly shot documentation of the possibilities of barbershop arguments, right? <laughs> so in, in a barbershop argument, you get to say, you know, the only thing that separates Al Capone from Joe Kennedy is Al Capone got caught and eventually died in prison and Joe Kennedy went on to produce presidents, but they both have been bootleggers. You know, people say shit like this, barbershop talk, and you, then you have to go home and be asking yourself like, well, well, damn, if Papa Joe did, was a bootlegger, like technically it could have went fucked up for him and yeah. we never would have had an American dynasty versus Al catching simplies and shit and it not going so well. But him being the preeminent marketing campaign in face of any Capone-like thing you want to sell cigars to a restaurant, right? Yeah. So it got a, I got a chance to say, you know, well, shit, what if I could do this for my guys? And again, giving it a shot and giving it a try, I thought of that shit at 15 years old. I started trying to figure out how to do it 10 years ago, Daniel and I got it done eight, nine years later. And and now you have this. And and I say that just to say that I re- Brian Koppelman, the creator of Billions, um, is a brilliant writer to me. And he's a, fr- he's a friend also. But Brian has been putting up lately these just encouraging things, telling writers to write. Even mm. if your stuff isn't getting bought, even if you don't think it's good, to write, to, to push yourself, to push the idea forward. And... I've been taking a lot of inspiration for that because Daniel Daniel Weinfeld and I, one of the co-writers and co-creators, Daniel and I have been talking and developing this over 10 years. Now I know how to do it, how to go in a room, how to get it. You know, it won't take me 10 years for the next one, but it was worth the struggle. You know, it was worth doing that. It was worth f- tweaking my idea. It was worth critiquing my idea to be like the first time around, like, nah, it's not, it's not what it should be because I was nervous as shit the night before it came out about everything in it, you know, the, the the what scenes were shot, how did it look, the production value, and now seeing people get it, and unlike a lot of other artists, not have to call yourself a genius. Let me tell people something. Every artist thinks they're a genius. Every comedian thinks they're fucking Richard Pryor. <laughs> in some part of your mind, you have to think you're great, or why do it? You have to believe there's greatness in you, right? But I never wanted to be the guy, I'm a fucking genius. You know what I mean? I just never wanted. But to see it, because I always thought the idea was genius. Like, fuck that shit. You remember real people that used to come on in the 70s, 80s? I I remember watching that show as a kid, looking at motherfuckers like, wow, these motherfuckers exist in in, in these off, far off places like Iowa and Kansas. And I wanted to approach it. I wanted to approach people in a very... I'm here right in front of you kind of way, not above you, not celebrity, Michael Moorish, but people know I'm a rapper and it gave me that opportunity and people can say it's genius and I'm going to say I'm humbled and honored, but you're fucking right. And it's genius because I'm engaging people at a regular human level, not at the level of celebrity or power they're used to being engaged, but one that allows them to fully open up. I, I, I haven't seen it on TV since some shit like real people. Mm. Uh, no, I haven't seen revolutionary TV like the Jeffersons or you know, all in the family or mod. And I think that the world is getting scary and pussy, to be honest. You know, not to not to disrespect pussies because pussies are tough. But <laughs> I think that something needs to be dangerous. The best compliment I got on this press run has been like Ambrosia. Ambrosia for Head said, how's it feel to have the most dangerous show on TV? And it's dangerous because it unites people. It doesn't separate people. It gives you alternative answers than the ones you thought you had and it forces you to think it doesn't solve all the problems or wrap it up pretty at the end. It gives you some options to do and some shit to think about. And it's funny as fuck and subversive and dark, and I like it. And I got to imagine Netflix gave you plenty of room. Yeah, they weren't tripping, man. They like, don't trip. They don't trip. No, they don't trip. Just go, you know what you're doing? Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you walk up in the room like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but they're s- smart enough to let people create their own shit like for, for stand-up comedy there's no one better in terms of like interacting with them about especially you don't have to give many notes on the material 
He That's just, so dope. They, they know that you're going to do your best. That's dope. Yeah. They don't, That's dope. They can't help you. Like, no one can help you as a comic. There's not a, a, another person like an executive that's going to help you do your best. Yeah. You got you to gotta be looking at it yourself ruthlessly, and you'll figure it out. And so they trust you. Yeah. So I would assume they did the same thing with you. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What a world. Yeah. Forever, the, it was the opposite. There was 50 fucking cooks in the kitchen. And everybody's pulling you this way. Telling you, need you what neighbor. to do with your shit. <laughs> yeah, you need a fucking theme song. You, got, you, need, you need a thing you say every week. What you talk about, Willis? You, know? <laughs> exactly. you needed a hook. Everybody needed a hook. Oh, shit, you said that. Shouts out to different strokes. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my God. Shouts out to different strokes. <sighs> 